Hey up guys, it's Ricky here. This is a lesson about finding the minor key reliably every time you want to play it. You don't want to be fudging around looking for it. What you need to be able to do is to plot out the chords, the scales and everything in the minor key reliably and predictably. Now if you've seen my lesson on the L7 grid, this introduces a different grid. This is what I call the 7-7 seven, seven grid because it looks like two number sevens to me it just reminds me what I'm looking for when I'm looking at the fretboard so here is the seven seven grid but the first thing that we need to do is what is the minor key and how do we find it the way we all learn about key first is by using the major key. Now, I think of major and minor as being two sides of the same coin. They're kind of like yin and yang. Major and minor, they are really just inversions of each other. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So we're going to look at the key of A major. No C major today here, guys. If we take the notes from the A major scale, we get those seven notes there. Let's make the amendments that we remember from our key signature. We get an F sharp, a C sharp, and we get a G sharp. Okay, so now what we're going to do is look at putting the Roman numerals underneath these bad boys and then we're going to turn this around and we're going to find the minor using this. And you're going to see that minor is essentially an inversion of the major key. And in fact, you can think of major modally as being the Ionian mode. But that's beyond the remit of what we're talking about today. Now let's just divide this up. A, D and E. We get our major triads there and B, C sharp and F sharp those are minors so let's just change those into minors by adding a little M B minor C sharp minor F sharp minor we'll just circle those there because these are our secondary triads 1, 4 and 5 are the primary triads, 2, 3 and 6 are the secondary triad, and then we've got chord 7, this is the leading note chord. Because I said this is an inversion, chord 6 is the key to this, and if you know how to change your pentatonics from major to minor, you'll realise that this is exactly what you're doing. So if we take that F sharp, and instead of having A as the starting chord, as the tonic, which is the one chord there, we're going to have the F sharp as being the tonic. So let's Let's take that F sharp, G sharp, and then what we do is we roll over to the A, because we've got to the end of our musical alphabet, we've got A, B, C sharp, D, and E. So we've used all our letters again, we've attached those sharps to them. And what we can actually do is if you want to, you can transfer these minors over as well. So that's F sharp minor, the B minor, that lives here. Get the C sharp there, that becomes a minor. And don't forget that Wobbly Bob has to go over, so that G sharp is still a diminished. So essentially, we've got the same chords, we're just starting in a different order. But what we do is we maintain the Roman numeral system. Now, if you know the Roman numerals and how they work, uppercase means major and lowercase means minor. So chord two here, because it's diminished, we're going to add that diminished symbol. But if you notice, I wrote it with lowercase because diminished chords have a minor third. And if we stay with that lowercase spelling, that makes sense. Now, remember here, we had chord one here in the major. Well, this becomes chord three in the minor. But I like to maintain the structure of the minor scale throughout this. In the minor scale, if you know it, it goes root, second, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat six, flat seven. That's the natural minor scale. And this also happens to be the spelling for the Aeolian mode. Those two are basically synonyms for each other. I think it's really useful if we take the flat third from this scale formula and add it to the Roman numerals so that we can see the distance that the chord is from the tonic. So we're going to put a flat third on there. And we can see that we've got the same tonality in all these chords here, but we're going to put chord four there. We can see that chord four is minor, so I'm going to do that lowercase as well. C sharp minor. Let's do that lowercase. Notice for uppercase, I put these serifs on. With a lowercase, I don't put the serifs on on that five. It might be a little bit confusing, but I'm definitely thinking of this as being lowercase. For the D chord, we can see that it's a major. So we've gone one, two, three, four, five. This is chord six. But to show that it's major, I'm going to put those serifs on. I'm going to carry this flat over here. We can see that we have a flat six chord. Chord five here is major also, but this becomes chord seven in the minor. And we 
carry that flat over there. So you can see that by adding these flats to the Roman numerals, we keep that scale formula intact. But it also tells me the interval distance a chord is from the tonic. Chord one is the tonic, the minor tonic. So if we look at that one there, we know that this is going to be a minor six away if we want to find that chord and play it. But that's the hard way. This is going to be the easy way that I'm going to show you. Worth noting with this, one, four and five here with the primary triads in the major. And if we look at chords one, four and five there in the minor key, they're the same tonality. These are minor chords. Now you might spot this one here. This is the topic for another video, but sometimes that gets turned into a major chord. And in fact, a lot of the time gets turned into a dominant seventh. We're not going to go there now, but just so you know, if you wanted to, you could change that out for a major voicing instead, which is a lot of fun. So what you can essentially see here that the minor is relative to the major, and this is why it's called the relative minor. It is relative. We also get natural minor. We also get Aeolian. So those are just synonyms, guys. They're just different names for the same thing. And if you want to, it's a bit crude, but you can see that if you're in the minor key, the relative major is called flat three. And that just jumps up that way. So you can see going from six becomes one, flat three becomes one. You can switch around, which is handy if you want to move from major to minor and you want to think about your chords in a different way. Now, how do we apply this to this 7-7 seven, seven grid? Well, let me tell you, it is easy. <laughs> it is so easy, it's untrue. And to be honest, I think I've seen people discuss this before on YouTube, but this is my way of understanding it. And the cool thing is this hooks up to the L7 grid. And when you join them both together, you get a really powerful framework to play your chords, your scales and your arpeggios. First thing we're going to do, we have the E and the A strings. We're going to look for the tonic again, like we did on the L7 grid here. We're going to look for the tonic on the E string. So if we're in the key of F sharp minor here, and what I'll do is I'll keep this very simple. I'm going to pretend that this is the second fret here, and this note here is the F sharp. Well, if that's going to be the F sharp, I'm going to put my chord one on there. Look, it's Roman numeral. And because it's my tonic, I'm going to put a circle around it just like that. I'm going to get the colors out so that you can spot everything really clearly. I'm going to take those primary triads from the minor key. And I'm going to plonk them on here as well. So chord four goes here. Then we get chord five here. Starting to look already like the L7 grid, but it's a little bit different. Let me just color that in. Blue is the color of sadness <laughs> and the sadness is going to be shown in these chords because these chords are all minor. So you can see here we've got this pattern and this pattern to me looks like a number seven. We need another seven for it to be the seven seven grid and we're going to go up that minor third. But because we've gone up this minor third, that means this flat third chord lives just there. Now what we're going to do is flesh this out, guys. So we've got chord four, chord five. Then we get chord six here, got that flat on it as well. And then we go up another step and we get chord seven, which is major. If I put some color on it, you can see now it looks like a seven standing on top of a seven. So we get the seven, seven grid. Now, the cool thing is I've done this in F sharp minor. I can change the tonic of this. Remember, the tonic is really the key tone, the tone that determines what key it is. So this is a movable idea. And the way we apply this to guitar is we use our string. So I'm going to draw a string here, put frets on it. I'm going to do the string here, E, F. I'll put the naturals in first. We've gone from E to E here. Let me put the sharps in now. F sharp. I'm going to use the enharmonic equivalent here of G flat. And the rest of these are all going to be flats. Now, here's the cool thing about this. This circle represents the tonic. And all you need to do is find out which fret to put this on. And I'll just do these dots on here as well, just to show you. That could be your head note. You've got the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, the ninth fret here. All we need to do is take this tonic and select a key that we want. Now, I can be agnostic about this. This is how the minor key comes about, but we can discard that because all we need to know is we've got three minor chords here and three major chords here. Because this is the tonic, we can change it to any key we wanted to. So if I wanted the key of B minor, all I would do is start this 7-7 seven, seven grid at the seventh fret, and that would give me the correct position. In this instance, we've worked it out to be 
F sharp. So we would start this at the second position, whereas the B would be at the seventh position. If I wanted it to be in C, I would just move it up to the eighth fret. So it becomes this really movable idea. Now, the thing that's really critical about this is that it uses the E and the A strings, and this ties into our bar chords yet again. So we get the bar chords on there, and the bar chords that we're going to get are the E and the A shapes. So that you understand how these majors and minors are split up i'm just going to circle those there and we've got wobbly bob so let me just color these in as well guys so that these make sense we've got a blue chord which is a sad chord some more sad chords here for the minor we can color these in as well so there's the major there's another group of majors there these chords and these chords are the same chords, they're just in a different order. If I colour these in, you'll see how that works as well. It's just the naming of them in the Roman numerals that changes things. You can see where those six chords live. Now, we do have Wobbly Bob. And just for the sake of being complete, I'm going to put Wobbly Bob in here because I did that in the major key version of this video. Wobbly Bob lives just below chord three because if you think about it, it's chord two there. So let's put Wobbly Bob to step up from chord one there. And let's colour him green because he's a bit of an odd colour. If he's wobbly and he's green, then you don't want to stand too close, maybe. So now you can see we have the layout of the minors we have the layout of the majors but we also see where that diminished triad is going to live so like i say these are e and a shapes now what i'm going to do is show you how those lay out in a fresh sheet of paper here so that you know what chord shapes you need to play we've got a blank fretboard we can pick any position on here the main thing that we need to know is we are using e and a shaped chords and we can think of this as tying in with the cage system as well so this is how those chords all connect first thing we're going to do here is we're going to have e shapes on this side and then we're going to have a shapes on this side let's put the grid in let's do it in our good old friendly key of a minor that means we have to find the tonic on the e string if we go e f g then we get an a here at the fifth fret now this is going to be our minor so we're going to put that chord one that's going to be our tonic here comes chord four chord five then chord three goes here chord six goes here with the flats on and then chord seven with those flats on there and put it in for the sake of it i'll put chord two in wobbly bob just goes there let me just highlight this so that these sevens pop out at you that's the infrastructure that you need to know so the next thing we need to do is take these shapes here on the E string, because these are going to be E shapes. We need to apply the correct E shape to this. So this first shape here, the tonic or chord one is a minor chord and it's an E shape, but it's an E shape that has been minorized. So we end up with the fifth, the root and the flat third here like this. We look for the root note of that chord and that would be fret five. This would tie in with this fret five here. But remember that this is agnostic. It doesn't matter which fret you do it at because this one here in chord one, that's going to be our tonic. So this and this are exactly the same, but it moves. Don't forget that it moves as well. Let's put the fifth here and then the root here. So you can see we get root, fifth, root, flat third, fifth root this is the first shape we need to apply to this so let's put this chord seven in here as well i'm going to extend this into a useful diminished sound which is going to be a minor seven flat five just in case you don't have to include this but because i've put it in there i'm just going to include it this is a whole step up so this would be at the seventh fret this would be chord two and it would be diminished and because we need that flat five i'm going to move that down there and let's have the root of that chord here. We're going to get a flat seven, a flat third, and then we're going to get a flat five there. So that would give us a minor seven, flat five. And in fact, that would change how we spell this Roman numeral version, because what we would do is we would put a dash through the diminished symbol to show that it is a half diminished chord. Minus seven flat five is equal to a half diminished chord. And that is what lives there.
Now the next chord we want is the flat three and this is gonna be a major chord. Now this is super useful because we get back to the traditional shapes that we know for our bar chords. Remember, this is on the E string, so this is gonna be an E shaped bar chord. I'll put the fifth, the root, and the third in. You can see that is the standard E shaped chord. Let me build out the rest of the chord as a bar chord. And then you can see that this would be the fifth fret, this would be the seventh fret and this would be the eighth fret but remember we want to be agnostic about that what we're doing is looking at this structure and about how this seven sits on top of this seven and where we put that diminished chord if we want it so that takes care of the chords that have their root note on the E string. We're going to switch over to the chords that have their root note on the A string, which are chord four, chord five, chord flat six, chord flat seven. And as you can see, I am actually missing a chord box. So let me just draw one in quickly. So let's take this one here. This is going to be chord four, and we can see that this is a minor voicing with a root note on the A string. So we're going to have the root of the chord there. The A string is our foundation. Remember, just as that's the E string there. E string is the root. E string is the root there. This is going to be on the A string. So we get a root. Now, because it's minor, we take the 5R3 of a major shape, 5R3, and we flatten the third, and that puts the flat third here. So we get 5R3. Let's finish it off so you can see it as it would be as a bar chord. Put those as bar chords if you want them to be. I'll just cross off those strings because we don't need to play those in the chord two. And then that gives you the position that this chord lives. Let's look at chord five now. Let's bang this one over here. Now, because this is a minor shape and its root note is on the A string, we're gonna end up with the same shape. So we're just gonna copy essentially that there. Now this would be at the fifth fret. Remember, this is chord four. And this is going to be chord five. So if I move this up a whole step, you can see that that's going to be at the seventh fret. So we've got root, fifth, root. That would be the major third. Flatten it, we get the flat third. Then we put the fifth on to finish out the bar chord. And then that's where we would bar. I'm going to have to sneak this one in all the way around there. We could look at this and we think, okay, this is an A shape. I'll just cross that one off there as well. And then we get the root note here. The spelling of this is major. So we maintain our five root and major third there. You might bar across there. You might play that as a three fingered shape. You might use your pinky for that. But this is essentially a bar chord. And this is going to be flat six. That's called flat six. And we would play this at the eighth fret in this key of A minor. So now the last chord that we have is this other major. The thing that's cool about this is that this is gonna be the same shape as the flat six chord. Let's put this on here. Root, fifth, root, major third there, and then we get the fifth back here. We're not playing the E string, so we cross that out, and then we just bar across there. Now this is gonna be chord flat seven. And if we were looking at this from the fret perspective, we could see we've gone from five to seven to eight, and now this would be at fret 10. The thing is, you don't have to count the frets once you start to see where the shapes live. So what I would do is I would practice these in chunks. I would find where the minors live, and then I would look at where the majors live. And then if you're in the mood for it, then you would add that diminished chord as well. Now it's all well me showing you this on paper, but what I think is gonna help you to really see this is if I play this on guitar so you can hear what the chords sound like and how I would practice learning them if I had to learn this all over again. And you can do that in this video just here. Okay. 